coast of the United States, the capital city, Columbia, South Carolina. I'd like to welcome you all. This is Late Night in the Midlands. I'm Michael Vera. And yes, I would like to welcome each and every one of you, wherever it is you may be around the globe. Maybe you're in one of the chat rooms. Wherever you're listening from, I, I thank you for tuning in, and I think you're, it'll be worth it for you tonight. I, I think last night was a great show, and it's you think, boy, how do you top something like that? Well, I don't know if we could top it, but uh, we could certainly uh, come pretty close to it, if not uh, catch up to it a little bit, because tonight we've got a pretty good guest. We've got Daniel Sheehan joining us tonight. Um, I'll tell you more about him. Uh, a little later on as we get moving here and before he comes on with us. But uh, we'll be talking about, uh, well, extraterrestrial civilizations tonight with uh, Daniel, a little bit of history. We'll get into some things tonight. And you'll be welcome to call in and join us uh, if you've got a question or a comment. As we get moving later on, please do not call in now. I'd never take calls in the very beginning of the show i just you gotta wait until after we get the guest on and we get rolling just a little bit so and i believe this well it is the first time that daniel uh will be on late night in the midlands so we've got some first time uh timers this week uh last night we had story musgrave on and what a fantastic guest he was and and of course we had uh, matthew petty who joined us as well uh later on in the show and i still say those are some amazing amazing pictures what they are i don't know but they're amazing all right so a little bit of news for you well first of all the websites triple w dot late night in the midlands dot com go on over become a member be informed that's first of all. And then, by all means, inform others, because that's very important. Knowledge is power, but it's only power if you use it as such. So uh, use that power, and the power is to be able to teach others and show them the way. Wake them up a little bit, if you will. Um, and I'd also like to uh, give a shout-out to Disclose Truth TV, uh, who... Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, they will be actually uh, using some of our content that uh, goes on YouTube. They'll be using that over there uh, on their channel and their website. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, we've uh, given them permission to do so today. So, uh, you know, we appreciate uh, the partnership. And the uh, and what I mean is the fact that, you know, they're willing to take shows like mine because I'm not the only show that they deal with and and get these shows out there and and help spread the truth and we of course appreciate that but i do have to let people know being that these shows do go on youtube uh from here on out folks uh you're not going to be allowed to um to download and use late night in the midland shows from youtube on your own channels and stuff you're not going to be allowed to do that no more uh so i mean you could share it you just cannot uh you can't take it as yours and and keep it because we've got a lot of that uh and uh you know there's people who actually um help the cause in order to have permission to to use that material and it wouldn't be fair to them if if we just let everybody do what they want with it so uh if you've got any of them up you might want to take them down and save yourself the headaches uh, that will be coming uh crashed ufo spotted in antarctica um a ufo researcher in russia has found what he believes to be a ufo in antarctica using google earth i think we've talked about this once before uh valentine dig turv from well he's from central russia and he made the discovery while browsing satellite photographs of the antarctic wastes uh on google's popular mapping service so he believes that he has found a ufo uh you can go to the link it's linked up under news and discovery on late night in the midlands.com and you could go and check it out yourself and see what you think the image that's with it shows what looks like a dark saucer shaped object embedded in the ice and again you'll click on the link the source of the story and that's where you're going to find the pictures 
Uh, they said it soon went viral on social media. Yeah, but you know, a lot of these things go viral. There's things that go viral that are meaningless. I mean, as a matter of fact, we'll get to some of that before I'm done here in this uh, news segment. Um, anyways, they've got the coordinates and everything where you could find this this object, if that's what it is. And uh, you could do it by using Google Earth. And that, again, is linked up. Uh, he says that I do not presume to know exactly what it is, but, you know, it's uh, definitely not a polar station nor a plane, he says, uh, So, uh, or it's not a helicopter either. So what is it? Is it a UFO? Well, right now it is. It's an unidentified, well, it isn't a flying object now, is it? NASA debunks September doomsday claims. So uh, we have a friend who says that the moon will be imploded in September. Well, NASA says you're lying. I'm just telling you what NASA's saying. I'm not saying it. Maybe it will happen. Uh, They say conspiracy theorists have claimed that a huge comet will wipe out mankind at the end of September. It seems that not a year goes by without somebody somewhere proclaiming that the world is about to end, whether it be due to a super volcano or an asteroid impact or an invasion of extraterrestrials, or a miniature solar system may be floating in and taking us all out. This year, it is uh, the prediction of a collision between the Earth and a large comet that has been causing the most concern, a rumor that initially appeared on the Internet a few weeks ago. Well, if it was on the Internet, you know it's got to be true, right? Conspiracy theorists have even suggested that world governments are already well aware of the threat and that they are deliberately keeping quiet about it to avoid causing a panic. Well, I'm not so much on board with this conspiracy that uh, this one, this particular one. However, on the side of the conspiracy theorists, they are correct if an object was coming to hit this planet, this little blue marble we call home, they're not going to tell us. Why would they? I mean, think about it. Uh, if we all, if it's just announced today, right now, right this minute, I mean, what would the streets look like an hour from now? I, 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 I fadden to even think about it. Astronomers, however, have been quick to point out that not such a uh, comet actually exists. NASA knows of no asteroid or comet currently on the collision course with Earth. Well, folks, breathe easy because NASA told you it's all going to be okay. And as you know, when NASA tells us this, we could take their word for it, right? And don't email me because that's definitely sarcasm. So the probability of a major collision, they say, is quite small. And this was said by NASA spokesman. So uh, not to worry. Uh, we'll make it to October. See, I say something's coming in October, but I'm not saying it's coming from space. I'm saying something big's going to happen right here on Earth. And I don't think it's going to have much to do with space, personally. That's what I think. Now, if something is going to affect us from space, I think humans will do the damage first. That's just my thought. Hypernova. One direct hit of its deadly gamma rays and life on Earth will be obliterated. Well, folks, there's something else you can concern yourself for those who are waiting for the world to end. And, and you know, one day it probably will, I'm sure, right? But uh, these hypernovas... Apparently, you know, happen on occasion in space. And if we're ever in the path of one of these gamma rays, it would sterilize the planet, they say. That's linked up, too, if you want to read about that. Now, here's one that gets me, and I talk about this stuff all the time. And I'm not going to go bashing any shows or any of that. You could find out on your own which shows promote this stuff. But Jade Helm, folks. It's very serious, it is, okay? I'm not going to make light of Jay Helm like some of these other medias are, all right? It is serious. They're practicing. They're preparing for something. They're doing it covertly amongst we the citizens, we the people, all right? And we know that those in charge are as crooked as they come. So Jade Helm is not to be taken lightly, all right? I would never say it is. However, you've got these medias out there 
and these boneheads who come out and claim that they're whistleblowers and they're this and they're that and they you know they've they've come from this organization that organization and you've got these medias out there who never ask for proof and if they do ask for proof they don't care if they get any because they go ahead and they promote these people despite not having any evidence to back any of it up and i don't know about you guys and girls but me myself i don't like wasting my time so why have somebody on the show and do multiple shows about it because they claim they're something that they're probably most likely not and when you could have just took the message they gave now i've had people out of the blue tell me about things like hey there's going to be this is going to happen or that's going to happen and i'll come on the air and i'll tell you what this person told me but i'm not going to take out a whole show and let them be the guest and and go ahead and jibber jabber you know a bunch of made up stories i I gotta have something to back it up right and then you'll get shows out there who'll say well he just doesn't know how to handle whistleblowers yeah i kind of do i know how to handle bs artists as well I'm really good with that, but there's this uh, Jade Helm whistleblower who claimed that Texas was to be attacked by government in June. As a matter of fact, I believe it was yesterday that we were supposed to be attacked. Well, Texas was, anyhow. And so now I wonder if these shows are going to go ahead and get this so-called whistleblower back on and find out what happened. And I don't know, I'm sure he's got a good excuse. Uh, He says that uh, apparently there was this post that was put on Facebook and certain medias who just want to promote themselves, who just want hits on their websites, who just want their videos to get the most views and they want more trips to the pyramids so they can take pictures with the pyramids and send those pictures to you. They don't even send them to you. They just post them on the website, which you'll pay to be a member of so you can even see them. But anyways... They ran with this. A few of them did. It says, uh, this guy says, I was working in Austin today and in line at a uh, continent store. Uh, That's what it says, continent. I think it was supposed to be convenient, but it says continent. A very uh, particular person approached me. I could tell he was shaken up. Upon making eye contact, he approached me and casually asked if I knew what Jade Helm was. I said yes. And then he told me uh, that it asked me if it was military, he says. Uh, He said, no, why? And then this guy apparently told him that he went AWOL and he was trying to warn as many people as he can and as many that will listen as he makes his way off the grid to a safe place. And folks, make no mistake about it, I'm sure now he's in his safe place. You know, meanwhile certain shows they get you know all this publicity and hits and and but they're never held accountable is anybody going to hold any of these these people accountable for the lies that they give you this is what irritates me i know i just i don't even belong in this area of media do i because i won't i won't go along to get along i know isn't that horrible of me but anyways uh this went out and apparently Let's see here. I want to make sure I'm right. Yeah, it was supposed to be the 15th, and correct me if I'm wrong, today is the 16th. So on the 15th, um, there was supposed to be, this guy's name apparently is Dale Lewis, and he was interviewed by some certain medias. I don't know, folks. For me, and now that I guess there's a new guy who's come out now too, so let's see how many will play off these things this is what makes me mad because you've got something like jade helm which i i take very seriously and i know many of you do and then you got folks out there folks because i have lack of a better word not the lack of but just you know respect to my listeners uh, but anyways, you got these people out there who make light of it and use it as, and, and just make these wild stories. They twist their own, their own little scenarios on it. And before you know it, people are looking at it again, just like everything else, like the boy that cried wolf. Oh, here they go again. You know, don't listen. It's just a conspiracy theorist. See what they do to these things? You see, I, most people who aren't awake, would run into this stuff and they think come on and no, no wonder they're so hard to wake up when you got stuff like this going on when you got medias that are supposed to be credible 
that just pass along anything that will get them, I don't know, a couple thousand listeners that night. It's it's unbelievable. I'm just I'm glad I'm not like that. I'm glad I haven't sold my soul uh, to the media gods. Anyways, uh, the Pope ensues dire climate warning. So now the Pope is coming out, and even after scientists have busted the fudge data, you know they these scientists were were busted fudging the data. You know, lying again twice, just like the Patriots. And it's only as many times as we caught them. Not, you know, how many time, how many more lies have they not been caught in? But the Pope is still pushing it, still telling everybody, watch out for climate, the climate uh, warming up. You know, we're we're in a lot of trouble. He's also saying that, you know, uh, we need to accept the extraterrestrials. So we'll talk about that a little bit tonight as we get moving along here. What I am going to do right now is take a break, and then we're going to come back with my guest tonight. Looking forward to talking to Daniel Sheehan this evening, and I'll take calls later on in this show at 803-317-2264. And again, late night in the Midlands, go on over, become a member. Hey, join us in our chat room. There's a big red button at the top of the site, and it says chat and listen. That is what gets you into the bat cave. We'll be right back, folks. Don't go anywhere. Radio Network and Late Night in the Midlands depends on you, the listener. Without you, there would be no us. So help us continue to bring you the best guests with the best information and subscribe today. Information on becoming an LNM subscriber can be found at the top of LateNightInTheMidlands.com. Just click the About Subscriptions tab and become part of the family while helping the truth stay alive. And while you're at it, maybe subscriptions aren't for you. A one-time donation helps as well. Click that Donate button on the right side of LateNightInTheMidlands.com and help us help you. Hello, this is Dick Farrell here to tell you about OxySilver. Legally available only through CureShop.com and HealthyWorldStore.com. Don't be fooled buying silver products from copycats and criminals. You've heard Dr. Leonard Horowitz and experts urge you to avoid deadly vaccinations and illegal operators selling stolen OxySilver and OxySilver copycats. You've heard experts tell you about suppression in alternative medicine and confusing propaganda in healthcare and the truth movement. Read Dr. Horowitz's book, Healing Celebrations, to learn how miracle healings can be made to happen through faith, prayer, and a pure diet. Get great immunity using vitamin C, D, and oxy silver, liquid dentist, GI Flora Pro, a top shelf probiotic. Use Green Harvest as a great tasting meal substitute for energizing organic nutrients and losing weight. And Zeola, a natural clays for detoxifying your body. More advice all these products and more are available from the cureshop.com including oxy silver the world's most powerful silver hydrosol electro energized to put risky injections toxic antibiotics and deadly drug pushers out of business oxy silver is covalently bonded to water unlike any other silver product using the frequency of chlorophyll 528 what dr horowitz explains is pure tone love the universal healer nasa originally developed covalently body silver hydrosols to keep astronauts healthy in space dr horowitz added the 528 frequency to nasa's formula and more. Oxy Silver works three ways to electrocute dangerous germs better than anything, far better than all leading silver products and without any risk. Oxy Silver oxygenates and resonates with 528 for faster healing. So help save lives putting drug lords and criminals out of business and keep the LNM network broadcasting. Register for our free cooperative at healthworldaffiliates.com forward slash 4948. That's healthyworldaffiliates.com forward slash 4948. And buy Oxy Silver and other great products in package specials at great discounts from the cureshop.com by oxy silver gi flora pro green harvest zeal love and love minerals at great discounts at cureshop.com that's cureshop.com with two p's c-u-r-e-s-h-o-p-p-e.com or call toll free at 1-888-621-7611 that's 1-888-621-7611 do it now i'll just say my name is Kay. 
and this event took place in 1987. Uh, I went to my mother's house one evening and I just decided to look out the back window and to the far left I noticed an object in the sky. It looked like a star at first but it was moving in odd directions. It, was, it looked like it was jumping up and down and then it would move from side to side and it had different colors. There was blue and red and green and yellow and the colors fluctuated on and off. Uh, I then studied it for a while just to make sure I was seeing right and then I asked my mother to come and look and she studied it for a while and she said oh that's not a star and I said well I didn't think so either so then we were studying these lights if you want to call them that like several days and uh, then we started to see, like, I, I would call it the Salmonix ball, only it was orange. And it would bounce up and down like the Salmonix ball on the commercial. And then sometimes there was, there was more than one, there were three of them. And they were bouncing up and down, and sometimes they would shoot off in different directions. And then one time, another night, I seen this orange ball and it hovered at a farther distance from me. And, and then at one point it stopped. And then it started slowly going down. Down, 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 down until it almost reached the ground and then it disappeared. The LNM Radio Network offers a moderated chat room at www.latenightinthemidlands.com. Just click the chat and listen page from the drop down menu at the top of any page on the website, or click the listen live button at the top of the home page at www.latenightinthemidlands.com. in the Midlands. I'm Michael Vera and that's the Vleets and that's God's Drug it's called. Uh, they've sent uh, some music into me and uh, of course I use it uh, with my bumper music and if you have music that you'd like to send into me that is yours, original music and you give me permission to use it I would be more than happy to uh, use it if it is acceptable uh, that is uh, for bumper music here on this show as a matter of fact some of the other hosts here on this network would probably uh, appreciate uh, the same as far as Ira and Rascala and uh, even Ryan uh, would would probably not mind if you got music you want to send it in please do so because we'd love to use original artists uh, you know um, I guess those who have not 
made it to the big time yet, I guess you could say. Well, you know, we'd like to use their music first because uh, the music industry has made it just so hard to try to uh, use bumper music. They're like ready to take your head off for it, which is crazy, but uh, that's the way it is. Hey, the website's latenightinthemidlands.com. You can also get there by going to lnmradionetwork.com. And uh, shout out to our radio affiliates. Hello to all of you on the Dark Matter Radio Network. And, of course, those of you uh, listening from K- K98 Talk, and High Point Radio, the top of New Jersey. They cover New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania on 100.5 FM and 1700 AM. And if uh, anybody else out there wants to pick up Late Night in the Midlands or even any of the other shows uh, on the l and Radio Network, uh, give me a shout-out, and I'll do the best I can to get you in contact with the right people. Uh, so we're going to get things going here. Our guest tonight, Daniel Sheehan. Daniel Sheehan is a Harvard College-trained American government and foreign policy scholar, a Harvard Law School trained constitutional trial attorney, and a Harvard Divinity School trained expert in the field of comparative social ethics and alternative worldviews. Over the last 40 years, as an attorney, public speaker, and university educator, Mr. Sheehan, has helped to expose injustice, protect fundamental rights, and eludicate a compelling vision for the future of our human family in many fields. In no field has his work in these three areas been more important or more appreciated than the controversial yet highly important field of extraterrestrial intelligence and its related field of the UFO phenomena. Attorney Sheehan's passion and dedication to this specific issue, despite all of the raised eyebrows that his interest in this field has occasioned on the uh, part of his professional colleagues in both the legal field and his role as a university educator, uh, have placed Daniel Sheehan at the forefront of some of the most important legal studies and forums in this unique and important field of human endeavor. Mr. Sheehan is a 45-year member of the State and Federal Bar Associations of the State of New York and the District of Columbia, and he has been admitted to practice before the courts of 28 states, and he is our guest tonight. So, why don't I go ahead and try to pull him on right now. So Daniel Sheehan, coming up, we hope. You never know with these things. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Well, folks, maybe not. Well, you know, there's some things that could be happening here. Either something came up big time, or he forgot, or I just caught him at the wrong time. You know, Mother Nature may have called. You just never know. So what we'll do is we'll try back with uh, Daniel Sheehan again in just a moment. And in the meantime, I'll tell you, go to latenightinthemidlands.com, become a member, be informed. Folks, keep in mind, that for almost eight years now, that's as long as Late Night New Midlands has been on the air, we have kept everything free. Uh, we have not never locked up our information and charged it, charged for it. We never put a price tag on the truth. We've always left it open, and we've always relied. Well, actually, for the first two years, it all came out of my pocket. But after that, it just, you know, we start growing, folks. It just couldn't be no more. So since then, uh, you, the listener, have kept us on the air. You've, you've always, you donate, you subscribe, you do exactly what we need you to do to keep us there. We do very little advertisement, if any, very little. I mean, we've got, uh, Healthy World Affiliates. 
Um, and, uh, we've got, uh, brother Jasper and outside of the others, I mean, we don't, we don't make anything really unless, uh, unless something's bought and we don't sit here and do infomercials to try to sell anything, but you know, every little bit helps folks. And so, uh, with your donations, we will remain on the air here on the L and M radio network. And I'll tell you, we have, we have been growing really nicely and finally we're starting to, uh, you know, see results from it. I, Ira has done a fantastic job, him and his wife with, uh, the website and with everything else. And, uh, we, we feel pretty blessed here at L&M to have such a fantastic team. You know what else we're looking for, folks? We're looking for those of you who would like to be writers, would like to write, uh, and we'll put your, we're, we'd like to eventually get to original articles for our website and have writers. We don't want to be like, you know, uh, veterans today or any of that. We don't want just you to write whatever you want and know whether it's true or not. We want, we want actual true information. So, so, you know, if you're out there and you know, you, I don't, whatever it is, UFOs, government conspiracy, what any of the stuff we cover and you want to write about that. And, uh, we would love to, uh, start publishing it here on the LNM radio network and on late night in the Midlands. Now I'm going to try. And pull in my guest uh, one more time here, and we'll see what happens. And hopefully we'll get Mr. Sheehan on with us. But if not, we'll have to go another route, maybe. So we'll see how this goes. Sometimes I wonder, folks, if I'm. I, I sometimes I wonder if I have a little psychic ability myself. Oh. Hello, this is Dan Sheehan. I'm not available at the moment. All right, well, folks, there you go. See, I have the right number, so we know it's not an error of mine. Well, here's what we'll have to do, unless Daniel calls in at some point uh, soon during the show. Uh, we will have to go another direction and we'll reschedule Daniel Sheehan, which is, it's okay. I, you know, it's, things happen. I think I scheduled him uh, a couple weeks back. So, you know, I'm sure he's a very busy man and, and these things happen. Um, that's, you know, the ones that make me mad, the ones that I've talked to earlier in the day and then the show time comes and it's like they get cold feet. And they wind up, you know, make, you know, not even giving you an excuse. They just take off and never show up. But, uh, he's not one of them. So, uh, anyways, uh, folks, I am going to hit another break here and I'm going to do it because I have to do it because I want to see what we're going to, uh, get coming up here in just a moment. So hang in there with me. Uh, maybe I'll actually run a song here and, uh, and we'll go that route. So folks, we'll be back in a moment. This is late night in the Midlands. I'm Michael Vera and, uh, we have struck out tonight. We'll be right back. I made love to an alien, the Roswell last night. We strolled along together in a pale moonlight. I had a funny feeling that something wasn't right. I made love to an alien last night. When she gripped my hand, I was feeling mighty fine. But her fingers with mine would not intertwine. I it down and gazed into her eyes. There were bigger donuts and blacker than the sky. I said, I'm feeling lonely. I said, Lord, so am I. We'll stroll along together, but we won't question why. The ground beneath your feet is flashing red and white, and sprouting little mushrooms left and right. Then she threw me down and put me on my back. To tell the truth, I thought I'd seen my last. But she set it down and snuggled in my arms. And I've made love to that baby from the stars. And now I'm living happy, happy and free. I've got a little 
your alien daughter, she almost looks like me. Your mama travels far and wide to all the stars you see. The planet Earth is home to little Kelly and me. I made love to an alien near Roswell last night. We strolled along together in the desert tonight. I had an awful feeling that something wasn't right. This is Late Night in the Midlands. I'm Michael Vera. We had Daniel Sheehan scheduled for tonight, but uh, something for somewhere, somehow, uh, has prevented us from connecting. Now, somebody made a suggestion in the chat, and uh, boy, I'll tell you, people know how to get me going. But, you know, a not far from the truth, it's happened before, but somebody said uh, Coast may have given him a choice. And, you know, I... Uh, 
folks, I I hate to bicker about these things because it it makes you look like um, like you're trying to you know compare yourself as you know or what have you. But uh, they have done that. They really have. Uh, Helene Olson, who's been on this show many times, God rest her soul, she's passed away now. Um, I promised while she was alive never to bring it up on air because she wanted to be a continuing guest on Coast. Because let's face it. You're you're gonna get a lot more uh, looks uh, because you know there's they they're around around 500 and some stations. I mean, and you know they're at a time they say they're the number one show at night. Well, I don't know about that. Uh, if you put a show on from what uh, one o'clock in the morning to five o'clock in the morning, I mean, what else is on to compete with you at that time? With traffic reports, I mean. So yeah, you probably are number one, but uh, but yeah, they they have told guests in the past that if they come on my show, that they're not going to be allowed on their show, and I know that seems like you're thinking, you know, why would they care? Well, why would they care? I don't know. They've done it to Art Bell too. They've they've told uh, different guests that you know they had to choose. If they were to go on one show, they weren't going to come on theirs. And see, that's that's dirty play. That's that's rotten to do that and it's not even if they do that they do do that i mean i know for a fact i've had david serrata on this show he's told me about some of the control factors that gets pushed on uh when you're a guest on that show and i know there's a lot of you out there a lot of guests who will not talk bad about them because hey let's face it uh, if you go on coast to coast you're gonna sell a hell of a lot more books than you will if you come on late night in the midlands all right uh, because for one, we're just, we're not a constant infomercial. You know, we don't, we don't sit and run commercials. Like, I, I don't know if you know, you know, when I was on my trip to New York there, you know, I didn't know the stations I had folks. I, I, I almost became a, a bit of a sheeple. I got a taste of being a sheeple because when I was taking my trip to Rochester, New York, there was, uh, that we had this XM, uh, it came with the rental truck and, uh, you know, there were so many stations. I mean, I didn't know where to start. It's like, I never seen such uh, choices in all my life. And, um, so I wound up on coast to coast and, uh, listening to that. And it's, you know, five minutes of talk, a couple questions, you know, they're questions that are written down for the host there. And then they read, they, they ask the questions that they're given to ask those questions and um and then it's like back to commercials for 10 minutes and they come back they'll come back from commercial and tell you hey this is such and such radio show and you go and we'll be back in a few minutes so they come back to tell you they're still going to commercial and they'll be back in a few minutes and i'm thinking holy cow i mean so mostly i i kept it on the comedy uh, stations where you know listening to people swear and complain about the world uh, I found that funny so that's what I did uh, I tried to stay away from the talk radio and and things because if I listen to say a coast or a show like that I could get fired up real easy because especially when they get on topics and they leave stuff out because they're not allowed to talk about it, it makes me really angry and I start yelling at the radio and so I wanted to take it easy and didn't do that but bottom line is there are shows out there like that who make you choose and you know only the real people come on my show and I'm not conceited and I'm not uh you know patting myself on the back I'm just saying it like it is, really. Uh, the guests who have come on my show, you know, they, they know what they're in for. I'm going to be very polite. I'm going to be very, um, very fair with my guests. I always am. But I'm not going to let them pass along a whole bunch of bull crap either. You know, they start that and, you know, I get my two cents in there. Um, you know, I'm not a yes man. I don't, I've had people who've wanted to come on the show. And who've wanted to, you know, prearrange questions before the show. And nothing against them. That's probably how a lot of shows do it. And I always tell them, no, we're just going to have a conversation. They get nervous because they're like, oh, my God, no, no kind of preparation like that. I mean, why? they're afraid we're not going to have anything to talk about. And here's the thing. If you have a passion for what you're putting out there, you have wrote books, some of you, if you've got a passion for that, and then we should never run out of anything to talk about. And if I have an interest in what you do, uh, as obviously why I should have a guest on the show in the first place. But now you got other shows who, 
I don't know, producers will go get their guests signed for them. Uh, producers will get questions from the guest, and then those questions are submitted, so the host will come in, he'll sit down at his desk, I don't know, an hour before he's on, and, and he'll look over the questions he's got to ask. Yeah, I don't roll like that. I just, I love conversations. Now, some of you have heard uh, a very few shows it's happened, but it's happened where a guest will come on and they expect it to be like that and it doesn't go very well. And so then I have to drop them early, uh, but it's happened. And so, you know, to tell guests that they can't come on another show or you won't have them on yours is that is like such child. That's like the kid down the street. If you go to Jesse's house and play with him, I'll never let you ride my go-kart again. I mean, isn't that? Is that not childish? I mean, my God. I could see if I only started popping in my chat room once a month. You know, if I was in my chat room once a month and you had to pay for me to be there, I mean, you know, but geez, I don't do that. I'm I'm in my chat room every night. Every night I could see what's going on in the chat room and, and, and I let p I keep my I'm I'm available. People can interact with me. Some of these guys, it don't work that way. Although I do understand in a sense why. uh, Because I have dealt with some serious, uh, I'm telling people who should definitely be patient somewhere. I've dealt with them. But well, here's what we're going to do tonight, folks. I'm not going to just keep rambling. Uh, What we are going to do is I'm going to have Rascala popping on with me tonight. And I haven't talked to Rascala in a long time. So it'd be fun to catch up with Rascala a little bit here. And Ira's going to jump on here with me shortly. And, folks, you know, all I could do is schedule the guest. You know, I can't go put them in headlocks and make them come on. So, you know, he was scheduled. I sent the another uh, reminder, well, about 3, 4 o'clock this afternoon. And uh, I never did get a reply, so I kind of had a feeling that this could go that way. And it has. So, you know, it is what it is. Now, tomorrow night, I've got Dr. Leonard Horowitz. Sherry Kane joining me. I try to get them on at least every couple months. I try to get them back on and give updates. Those poor people have been put through hell. Put through hell. And so, you know, I've stuck by them through all of it, and I will continue to stick by them. And I, boy, have I formed some enemies because of it, but that's okay. That's okay, because that's what real friends do. Um, we do have a call, so why don't we do that before we even bring Rascala on? We have uh, Donna. Donna in uh, one of my favorite places, Rochester, New York. How are you? I'm fine, Michael. We miss you. Oh, I miss you too. The time went so just too fast. Oh, tell me about it. Hey, got some great news. Only in Rochester. Eastman Business Park, which is the main building that the visitors went in, Uh which I know you're familiar with, right there on uh, Dewey Avenue. Oh, yeah. Will be be the first, will be the next, I'm sorry, location for a medical marijuana growing facility and dispensary. Hmm. Well, you know, and that's how it starts. First, it'll be medical and then recreational. But I I worry about New York, though, Donna, because the way they tax cigarettes, watch out the tax oh, yeah. they'll throw on marijuana. Well, this is going to be a company called Columbia Care, and the only thing they're waiting for is the license from the state, which is already in the works. Oh. So we they expect to hire about 250 people. And they were talking, uh, if you go to whec.com, you will find the entire article, which is quite lengthy. Um, It was on the 6 o'clock news. Quite quite a big deal here in in Rochester, of course. And so it's going to be on Dewey Avenue in Rochester? It'll be right there. As far as I know, they, that's the building they're showing, but there's many other empty buildings coded. But well, could they have? But it could, could be there because they said the high ceilings. Could they? Could they have picked a better place? Well, it's not a bad. That part of Dewey's not bad, right? No, that's that's fine. Well, it's 
nothing but uh, buildings from Kodak, actually. Well, yeah, empty parking lots uh, at this point. I always said if they ever wanted to rename that city, they could name it, uh, you know, Kodak City. Because uh, I, when I grew up there, I mean, you couldn't turn a corner without seeing a, a Kodak building. Absolutely. And a lot of those buildings, including the one that Bruce worked in, with the big blue glass windows, that's been all torn down. And yeah. the parking lots are just about empty when you when you look around. It's sad. It's very sad because my grandfather worked there, my uncle, my dad, my two brothers, my husband. I mean, and, and my son. Yeah, my... They all work at Kodak. My mother worked there. I worked there temporary. I was there for a couple months uh, through a temporary service once, and... Uh, I I didn't care for it too much. I don't know something about chemicals and me. They just don't mix. But <laughs> it depends on where you work because Bruce was in uh, engineering as a mechanical designer, so he mm-hmm. was in a totally different environment. No, but I, w- I was. It's the thing to see this happen. You know, especially I was dumbfounded that we're going to grow marijuana in Rochester. All right. You know, I- Hey, I'm, I'm well. I'm smiling. I'm happy to see it. It's about time. That's what they need. They need a little weed in Rochester, and then you'll see the murder rate going down. Is because people just stay home. They'll catch a buzz, uh, a buzz, and they'll watch the news at night. And so they'll stay in their their imaginary worlds, and they'll be safe. See, because right now, I mean, honestly, though, all jokes aside, you look at it, and you get you get these kids, these 15-, 16-year-olds who shouldn't be smoking it anyways, but you get these young kids, and, and what they're doing is they're going into these bad neighborhoods to try to hook up and get themselves some marijuana, right? So what happens? Absolutely. They wind up, they get stabbed, they get robbed, and you could cut out the middleman, and you could cut out all that crime, and just... That's it. You know, give it to people because it is uh, very healthy medically. There's so much you could do with it. I mean, we could cure cancer. We could cure so much with it. It helps people who have seizures. and I mean, I could go on and on. Well, even uh, the autistic kids. But as you know, I've, I've been through 13 back procedures, and I would love to be out of pain. It, it would be phenomenal i i don't know what it would be like i would i would After recommend years the years. well when they open it i would recommend you get yourself a card and you get over there and tell them that you'd like some loud the loud will help you <laughs> the loud, the loud oh, will no, cure no. your pain i promise you <laughs> i have a i have a pain doctor who's iranian and i don't think i'll have problems getting a prescription from him to be honest, and well, and you're a good as candidate. As I told you, I've never, I've never smoked it. Nobody in our family has been involved in it because they just they they aren't in that kind of group of people. They aren't drinkers. I mean, they're they're such goody goody two shoes. For if they see mom smoking it, they're going to be shocked. Well, and I don't care. <laughs> Well, Donna, if if you ever if you ever need some, uh, there's some good there's some pe- good people in Rochester who would be more than happy to direct you to the right places. <laughs> I think we both know of one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we do. And you know what? And he uses it for his Crohn's disease, and he 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 says it's done wonders for his Crohn's disease. So that's right a, that's important you know and he and he would let his doctor know too so and this is a guy who uh is was like a sunday school teacher and and I'm, we're talking you know 70 years old and he's smoking it i mean so uh, yeah no yeah. 75 and he's actually teaching for yeah so there you have it i mean it's a for all ages and you know uh, well not all ages i think i think there should be a i think 18 and older maybe i think anything under right. that it should be for severe cases you got a kid that's having seizures or has cancer yeah you definitely you give it to them but you don't smoke it There's, oh yeah absolutely especially i've had a child with cancer and it's a rough road even though she was tiny you know the liquid stuff would have helped her well, Sorry, I ha- my bird just woke up <laughs> yeah i hear them but uh hey i want to bring 
Oh, okay. Rascala says he needs a minute. So we got another minute, uh, Donna. But, uh, but yeah, I'll tell you what. I, I really enjoyed uh, my time in Rochester. It just it went by so quickly. And I, I really wanted to get back and have a Pudgy's Pizza with you and Bruce. And, unfortunately, I was getting stretched everywhere. And, you know, so well, I, I couldn't get back. When we come down again, we'll be bringing the Pudgy's Pizza to you. All right. Well, that sounds good. You know what's even what's good too, Salvatore's. I had a oh, sheet. Yeah. I got a sheet pizza from Salvatore's, fifteen dollars. Wow. Yeah, and and it was delicious, absolutely delicious. But you don't find pizza like that here in the South. You well, just, one of the things is they're in competition with Caesars. Their five-hour pizza. Yeah. That's it's standing room only at five o'clock. Yeah, well, you know, Caesar's five dollar pizza, you get what you pay for. It is a five dollar pizza. Now it's good if you're in a hurry, but I don't know. I the next day you could break windows with it. So uh, we don't mind. We eat it. But we'll have to check out Salvatore's because we do eat that too. But anyway, <laughs> back to the uh marijuana. I I was totally shocked. And if you do go to, um, in capital letters, W-H-E-C, and then dot com, there is a very long article uh, regarding this whole scenario. And I was shocked that it, it, it's coming to Rochester, of all places. Well, it's kind of that type of city that's just not into that stuff. No, no. Well, yeah, I have news for you. Rochester, every city I think in the country is very into it. I think that there's there's so many people who are in the closet right now as far as smoking it, but they're coming out now because it's getting legalized. But you know me, right. I I was always open. You know, growing up and and what have you. Uh, it was never no secret with me. I've I've told people for years that it has health benefits, and they think I say it just because I wanted to smoke it. And it's, you know, I I'm not one who uses marijuana for uh, just to have a good time or anything. If you know, if I do it, I use it medically, and it it it, it does wonders. See, yeah, I should have checked the second drag, right? What's that? I should have had a second drag. Yeah, yeah, you should have. You should have had a second drag. And if I would have got back... Well, let, uh, I think I'd better let you go and uh, get a hold of Rizcalo there. All right, will do, Adana. Thank you for the call in, and uh, enjoy the beautiful weather in Rochester. Okay, check out WHEC. Will do. You take care. All right, you Thank too, you. Adana. All right, bye-bye. Her birds are singing in the background, and... And uh, when Adana came to South Carolina, um, yeah, it should have took a second, second puff, definitely. It's, you know, uh, folks, I'm an advocate for it. I don't care. I, I just am. And anyways, let's get Rascala back. Let's see if, we, if he's ready here. Oh, he had to get his dog out. So Rascal will be with us in a moment. So will Ira. Folks, I'm sorry. Daniel Sheehan. Um, did not uh, pick up tonight, so uh, we are without him. You know, we had such a super show last night, and you know, I was I was like ready, ready to try to match that tonight, and well, we we failed. You know, it happens. All right, so I think we're gonna bring. I think Adana was calling back in, but I I think that was an accident. But we're gonna bring Riscala on with us here, and. Um, Oh, Adana, you are back. Huh, I don't think she knew she was calling, folks. But uh, she, yeah, she was back, as you heard. Oh, what a screwy night. Hello, uh, I could then take your call. <laughs> oh, what a, what a fantastic night. Um... Okay, folks. Well, you know, one of the things that we were going to discuss tonight, obviously, was the UFO phenomena. Uh, we were going to get into the whole Jesuit connection and uh, Pope Francis and, of course, his uh, his wanting to baptize baby aliens and stuff. Uh, so those are some of the things we were going to get into tonight. And as a matter of fact, we probably will uh, touch on those things uh, still uh, tonight here. So, oh, okay. Uh, I think Rascala is ready now. 
And we'll try this again. So Mr. Daniel Sheehan, not with us tonight. We'll reschedule him. Rascala, how are you, my friend? Hello, Michael. My God, it's been ages, it feels like. (laughs) (laughs) It certainly has. So Uh, what have you been up to? Tell me about it. uh, Wow. In January of this year, I um, was given an opportunity to attend a thing called gratitude training. And um, when when I was originally presented with this, I, I thought to myself, you know, the guy who presented it to me knows me. And I thought, you know, I was almost offended, you know, because you know me. I'm. Do I seem like somebody needs help in being grateful? No. <laughs> you know, but he told me it was much deeper than that because when I looked at him, I said, you know, the gratitude, you know. <laughs> and it was. It's it's far, far deeper than that. I came to learn that um, this is a corporation doing this. This is a company that is doing this called Gratitude Training. Okay. LLC. You can find it's in gratitudetraining.com. Mm-hmm. And um, so, what we're doing, what I came to find out is that uh, this company that's doing this, the vision of this company is peace within our lifetime. To bring people to the awakening of that we can have peace within our lifetime because the people ultimately are really where the power lies in all of this, in the entire equation. It is the people. The people outnumber the, those who are causing the problems by millions. So when the people wake up, they will relinquish the power from these these people who have been doing this all along. So that's a long story. Anyway, so peace within our lifetime. So I have been going through this process of changing, a transformational process. It has been, without a doubt, the the most, the craziest, the most, um, the the deepest, the most profound, the most angry, the, I mean, all of these emotions felt through this last six months of going through this, in learning about myself, and learning about this world, and learning about how relationships work, I've, I've learned more about those subjects in the last six months than in the 62 years that I've been on the planet. Um, Though, you know, I I do a lot of research and I knew quite a bit before. Um, Having gone through this has completely changed my perception, the way that I look at life. Um, There really truly is hope that we can overcome these people, that these psychopaths that we call our leaders. There is true hope in, in being able to overcome this system and the true hope lies in each one of us. And, that's, and, that's really what it boils down to. And you're so right, Rascala, and that's why I do what I do. Is disgust that I get with people's lack of effort uh, in society to turn this thing around because there are a lot of people who are still, you know, got their head in the sand. They think it'll go away. I can't see the boogeyman. Boogeyman can't see me kind of syndrome. But you're right. There, There is hope, and we can still turn this around. I, I, I've I, always believed that because if I didn't, what the hell's the point of even bothering? Well, I, and I have watched it. You know, when I say there is hope, I mean, I, I mean that now with, with more surety than, than ever before. I've watched it. I've, I've, when we went through, there's three parts of this thing. When we went through part one, um, I watched people who were strangers come together and start building really lifelong relationships. And when you go through part two, and there's a, sometimes there's some new people introduced into the crowd, and it's like, wow, you know, you just don't realize how much someone else will care about you if you're open with them and just tell them about who you are and they accept you for who you are. And it's a very humbling feeling, but it's also um, a very strong feeling of love when you realize that you're, I had, uh, I don't know, 12, 13, 14, maybe 15 people around me at one time hugging me. And it's, um, it's, it's profound. It really, you know, people will say there's power in prayer. There's, unbelievable power just when people come together and um just emote that uh, emit that emotion of of love it's amazing 
It is. It is. You know, and I've always looked at love. It's it's definitely an energy, and I've always looked at it. It could be like anything else. It could be used for good and bad. And 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 I know people don't like to look at the negative side of of everything, and I try not to. But you know, I've I've had love hurt the hell out of me before, but I've also had it make me you know be so thankful to even be alive. I mean, so <laughs> it works both ways. <laughs> yeah. 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 So. Love, love is something. The love that that I'm referring to is is a unconditional love. So ah. you see people who are of different color, people of different relation uh, religions, people who are of different sexual orientation, right? People who are, um, I mean, just the world would have them look at each other on the streets and say, uh, you know, forget you, pal, and walk away. You watch these people build serious relationships. I mean, not like um, like a family relationship, like a brother or a sister kind of relationship. Um, very strong bonds, and hold each other to be responsible for what we want, and what we want is world peace within our life, within our lifetimes. Um, so it, it's it shows me that it's possible. I, I've watched it happen. That's that's the. That's the part that um, that really, really convinces me that this is for real. We can really do this. If, if you could imagine people who go through this process, they'll go back and they will serve these new people that are coming in through this process on a volunteer basis for, and, and accept nothing other than maybe an acknowledgement, maybe. But other than that, they're doing it because that's what's in our hearts. We're... we're we're all servants. When we realize that we're all servants and we, we're here to serve each other, I get served, you get served, you serve me, I serve others, it, it begins to um, resonate with everybody. But we've got to get everybody to that level. That We're fighting a system that has been in place for thousands of years and, and has only gotten better. And, and you know time. what? Fa- family, yeah. for me, family's not just those who share the same blood as I uh, family for me are those people who who are there for me and I'm there for them those people who love me and I love them back uh, those you know so so you know just like home is where you hang your hat right well yeah. same thing with family I mean I've got I've got friends who and I love my brothers don't get me wrong but I don't spend hardly any time at all with them I mean I, I barely know them anymore it seems and and but I have friends who you know they're more like family than some immediate family i hate to say mm-hmm. it not that i don't love them i mean it's just it's it's different so yeah yeah, yeah. it's it's crazy so you well, don't imagine a a group of typically 30 sometimes up to 35 people every two weeks being brought to this being taught how to decipher the bs of the system so to speak every two weeks and they're leaders, each one of them are leaders, and they're going to go out into their communities and they're going to inflict change in the community. So we have an exponential reaction here going on, and it's it's very strong here. There's a, an entire community of these people here where I'm at, and um, it is amazing what they'll do for each other, even when they don't know each other. You know, I'll give you an example. Um there's a particular site that we can all go to. It's a private site that we can all go to. Somebody needed um, to have their mom watched, an elderly mom, while they went and took care of some things. And uh, someone showed up. They didn't know this person, but they knew them. They knew that they were in our community, trusted them with their mom, went and did about their things and came back. And then um, this person thanked them for staying with their mom. The person who stayed with the mom thanked them and walked away. Didn't, didn't ask for anything. Uh, other than to share time, and that, it's serve to serve other people. Sometimes it's 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 about it's about more than just money. It's it's a lot deeper than that. When you when you get to a point where you realize um, how powerful each one of us is, and and how worthy each one of us is, money is kind of a I don't know I don't know how to just properly describe it. Money is a tool, so to speak, that has yeah. been used 
against us, and, and a lot of us don't even understand that part. We base our our value on somebody's worth with regard to money, when the reality is the fact that we're just here, just you and I here, with the ability to speak to each other, just that fact alone is um, evidence that we are worthy to be here. God has breathed life into us, and through that breathing of life into us, that allows us to have that God spark with each within each one of us. That in that God spark that is within each one of us, we can unite, and through that u- unity, um, power, absolute power. You know, I'm, I heard you mention um, Dr. Horowitz is going to be on tomorrow night, right? Yes, sir. Okay, if you can remember, and I'll try to be on tomorrow's Wednesday. Um, part of this training that I'm going through, I'll, I'll be graduating from this in uh, late June and um, I'll be able to tell you a little bit more about it then because I'll have experience a little bit more but part of this training that I'm going through is the part one was kind of an awakening part two was kind of learning about relationships we learned about we had someone that we called a buddy and we were responsible for that person so if that person did something wrong then we did something wrong so you had to learn how to um Deal with that, you know, in a positive manner. Because if you know what's going to happen, you tick one of the one of the buddies off, and I don't care what you say, I'm going to do it anyway, just to piss you off, right? So you had to you have to deal with how to make that relationship work so that both of you win. And then part three is about building a team. It's about it's a micro microcosm of what we want to do on a macro scale, and that is we're building we're a team of us right now that is. Um, 32 of us, and we're leaving behind a, a legacy, and that part of that legacy is we're going to, we're raising $50,000 for a place here, one of the largest no-kill uh, shelters here in South Florida, I think in Florida for that matter, maybe even the Southeast, um, very large area, we're raising $50,000 for them, and we're going to be donating not only uh, materials and, and our labor as well as money and helping build this place. This is this is part of the training. This is so so a, each class that comes forward about every two weeks roughly is is going through this process. They're doing some kind of a community event that that leaves a legacy behind, that leaves a remembrance of them behind as they go out and impact the world. So that's when I tell you that there's hope, that's just a glimpse of what I'm talking about. But you get the idea. Every two weeks we got thirty some odd people coming out and doing this that's great that's fantastic and and, you know there's there's no harm in it i mean all that could come out of it is good so you know if more people would do that uh rather than drive by shootings you know (laughs) we'd be doing a lot better on this this planet but uh you know i think things have got to get worse before they get better i do expect the financial system's got to crash at some point Something's got to happen there. This system cannot continue the way it is. So, uh, you know, it's it, it's going to take a hit. And it's going to get worse. But there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, yeah. You know, you yeah. just you just got to. All of that is not <clears throat> directly within our control. That's right. part of the system that is corrupt. I mean, those of us who know what's going on understand that is part of a system that is corrupt. It's been that way for a very, very, very long time. It's just gotten better as we've gotten. <clears throat> on with time they've gotten technology like we have technology they know how they have hidden things that from us when i say they a small group of people who have great knowledge because they are the quote illuminated ones the illuminati they have a greater knowledge than the average person does because they understand and the knowledge has been hidden from from the general mass that there we are spiritual beings and we have a great deal of spiritual power but we don't know how to access that power because we're never taught that. It's like when you think about when kids go to the, through school, what are kids taught truly in school? They're never taught about the responsibilities of life that they're going into. Nobody, there's never a moment spent on how do you deal with a checkbook? How do you write a checkbook out? How do you control your finances? How do you they make used a budget? To. None of that stuff. When I was a kid in school, they used to do that stuff. No, it's all taken out. Yeah, I know. All that is gone. Yeah. And so kids are not going to be educated, they're going to be indoctrinated, and they're going to be indoctrinated for this system. And and like I said, as we go on through time, they just get better at what they're doing, which makes it worse for us. 
So the, the quicker that we can bring this awakening, uh, and it only takes 2%, Michael. 2% is all it's going to take to cause this a shift in consciousness so that people get, get it. They get what's going on. And all of the deceit, it won't matter. The MSM will try to spin everything. It won't work anymore. It, they will be as you and I are today. Um, they will be fully aware what the hell is going on. And when we reach that point, when the masses reach that tipping point, there won't it won't be a need for violence. We just won't need them anymore. Well, It'll be over. Well, you, the the only problem I see with with the masses finally coming together and seeing this is that unfortunately people wait for this stuff to come to their doorsteps, like Detroit and these other places that uh, these cities that are going, you know, and they were warned well in advance, mm-hmm. but they didn't believe it. And I hope that. The majority of the people will not wait for for these things to come to their doorstep because at that point it could be too late, and so you know, too late for you at least. Uh, yeah. You know, <laughs> again, we're, we're dealing with a system. You know, this is all by design. All this is going on. I was so sad to see a, a video today, um, and I don't remember what it was called, "Brawl in the Hood" or something like that, and. and it was in a, um, a black area of America somewhere, I don't know where, and there were some, a few Hispanics involved in it, but the whole neighborhood's fighting with each other. And, and I thought to myself, they're, they're so into this system, it's like I, I, if you ever watched The Matrix, there were times when Neo would be walking through, and all of these people that look like people walking around him were just part of The Matrix, they were just part of the system. And they didn't even know that they were part of the system, and they just operated according to the system. All of these kids, you know, they were kids. It's and, and there sickening. there had to be at least 50 of them it is, fighting each other. It is sickening now, Rascali. You could go on YouTube or any of these video sites and just type in fights, and these kids are recording fight after fight. And, and here's the thing. They, they think that they're cool and that they're getting... You're, you, listen, kids, all you kids who are out there fighting and recording it and putting it online, you're losers. You're, you're losers. Honestly, you are. In the end, you're losing. You're kicking your own asses for what? For nothing. It, it is. It's pathetic, Raskal, and it, it disgusts me. And as a matter of fact, um, I caught one of those and recognized the school here, and I went and reported it here in, in mm. South Carolina. Uh, I just, I'm not going to put up with that. I mean, it, it's ridiculous. But, yeah, I had a guy on Facebook today, as a matter of fact, who posted uh, it, well, it came in my news feed anyways, and, uh, he was a, a white guy, and he, I looked, at least from the picture anyways, and he was promoting, uh, a certain race getting knocked out by another race, and he thought it was all fun and glamorous, and I told him, I said, you're a moron. You are, you're the, you're what the problem is in this country. And so, and I blocked them. I mean, what are you, you going to do with people like that? I'm not going to argue with idiots, because then you got two idiots arguing. <laughs> crazy no no but if you consider it from the possibility that there's a saying that when when, if you want to fly with the eagles you fly with the eagles if you want to fly with the pigeons then you go fly with the pigeons so if you have eagles all around you then you'll start acting like the eagles that are all around you and that's what we're doing We're, we're we're putting eagles all around people so that those people that we are around begin to act like eagles, begin to, to, to live through the power and understand the power that they have and rise above all this. And, they, and then they begin to recognize the system. They begin to recognize that we are really living in a matrix. They're beginning to recognize that all of this is by design. All of this is by, and it's none of our choice. When you really come to the awakening of all of this, it's not even of our choice. The Bible says we were born into sin. I have learned in my personal experience that sin is the system that I'm talking about. It's been around for a very long time. When you look at Bible stories, the one time that Jesus literally got violent with people, I mean, he he got he whipped somebody out, right? What was it about? It was about money. And the root of that money was that there were bankers who at the time, first of all, didn't have any place to be in the church, which they are today. And second of all, they had no business loaning money and then charging interest on it. And they were doing both, and they were in the church on top of that while he came in. And what did he do? He overturned the tables, and he took a whip to their behinds. 
and he whipped them out of there. So that should give you uh, something to, to understand, meaning that today's problems are being caused by bankers. It's a small group of people who have all of this enormous wealth because of the system, the money that w- that is in place. We are we are graded by how much money we have. We are graded by how much money we earn. We are graded by materialistic things, whether what kind of cars that we're driving or the jewelry that we're wearing. And all of this is that system that I'm talking about. When you come to the awareness that you don't want to be, we have to be a within the system, because there's no way when we begin to unplug from the system is when we're called, actually it's too late now, but we're called terrorists. Those of us who don't, who recognize the system and understand what's going on well, are now called terrorists. Well, here's how it goes. they uh, We go into Middle Eastern countries. We've always had to have a boogeyman. So you had, yeah. you had uh, it was the Soviet, big bad Soviet Union who was going to kill us uh, back in the day, right? right. And so right. And then they have the Cold War. They bring them down or what have you, or or at least make it look that way. And and then the next thing is, oh, there's the, the, the big bad terrorists in the Middle East. And and so what we do is we go and we go uh, dropping bombs in their backyards, blowing up their children, and they fight back a little bit, and then they get the name terrorist. And so, you know, nobody else is allowed to do that because uh, uh, George <laughs> Carlin said it's our job. You know, we're it's a nice game, isn't it? Yeah, isn't it is a, a nice game? game. It's like, yep, they're terrorists. So if the Chinese just parachuted into the United States right now and they were running rapid through our neighborhoods and we were coming out shooting back at them they would tell their people were terrorists that's right you know and that's, that's how it exactly works right. yeah so these people are not terrorists they're sick of you blowing up their kids they're they're sick of us being in their noses uh, uh, being with our noses in their business yeah you in know? other places constantly yeah. constantly you know you want to you want to end the, the the wars between get the hell out of there leave leave them alone Stop blowing people up for no reason for your selfish... Well, they, ha- they have a reason. The reason is money. That's, that's why we need to get beyond this thing with money. Well, and People understand how powerful they are when, when we can get beyond money. Because if you look at money, again, as part of the system, Michael. We need to find some other way to deal with each other other than money. I, I'm not saying I have the answer. But I'm saying that the particular well, the, the the existing system that is in place right now is so corrupt that we fi- need to find a better way to deal with uh, with each other, and it and it must be a, a more honorable way. That the money, what we call money, is not even worth anything. Honestly, it's all controlled by a small group who tells us, okay, it's worth this amount today. It's not worth that amount tomorrow. It's worth this amount the next day. We don't even have any control over it. Well, I think what we do, the, the way we, we begin to change this is, uh, well, again, I'll say it. We need our sheriffs. We need our military. We need our people. Uh, we don't need any of them if we just have our people. But uh, we, we we start turning this around by setting examples. That's we right. we go That's and right. arrest, and we, we try. And if they're found guilty of treason, I've got an idea. Look, let's not hang them. We're beyond that now. Let's go drop them off in the Middle East. How about that? We'll just or let them let them go camping. We have camps set up around the United States. Let them go camping. Yeah, well, as for 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 some sort of forgiveness for what these scumbags have done, we'll drop them off like Cheney, the Bionic Man. I mean, after they're done wiping the floor with this guy, they could use the parts for something, <laughs> right? And then we'll you know Bush. We'll we'll send them Bush too. You know, so. yeah. That's that's what we yeah. need to do. Set a, set some examples, and hey, you know you're gonna uh, you're gonna have to face those who you violated, and they violated. Not I, I know you're not for this, and I'm not for it. I don't want drones <laughs> killing babies. I don't I don't want you know people's weddings being blown up because I don't, I don't want any more war. Period. I don't and either. I want peace, that's, and nobody I stand does for peace. For peace within my lifetime, I don't want any more war. We've had enough war. We have kids who have literally grown up thinking that war is a normal thing because they they were born while war was going on, and they still exist today. They're in their teens, and they think that war is okay. Hey, what's oh, of life? It's oh, war. oh, Rascal, get this. Here, I got you. You'll understand. I went to Rochester, New York, right, and I go to my son-in-law's side of the family. 
And I've known them. I mean, I've changed all their diapers. We've been there, done that. You know, we've like a, a stepfather to them all, right? And anyways, I'm sitting there, and one of them comes and sits down. The older boy, he's so, I think, 25 or so. And he sits down, and he's just out of nowhere. And I'm, I'm trying to keep work away. I'm like, I'm not going to get involved. Or I'm just going to have fun here, right? And, and then I hear, oh, but Hillary's going to be a good president. And... Man, I creeped. I was like, yeah, all my gears just start grinding, and my eyes turn bloodshot, and I looked at him, and I said, what you say? And just before that, his grandmother also said that Hillary will be a good president. And I'm like, and, and I asked him why, and Rascala, they repeated exactly what the mainstream media is saying. Exactly to the word, I'm telling you. They, they every freaking word of it was, it was like I turned the TV on. And I said, so I, I, I told them the real deal, but of course I'm crazy. I was like, yeah, you people, say Hillary will be a good president again. I really got to go. It's like, come on. I, it just shows. I mean, there, that was like, it smacked me. And I said, oh my God, they have been brainwashed by the yeah. fake news. They, yeah. I mean, literally, I swear to God, they could have been reading the same teleprompter. They, they sounded like, what's her name? Bimbo Blonde there. Uh, you know, give it, given the news there for Fox, but unbelievable. This is the system. And, and, and like I said, they're getting, they've gotten better and they're getting better at what they're doing. That's why the importance of, of right, raising the consciousness level. Once we get beyond a certain point, they'll break this <clears throat> hypnotism, if you will, that's going on. These people are like hypnotized with these thoughts they don't even they think that they're doing the right thing oh they the are grand, this who is it the grandma that you're talking yeah. about yeah she said it first and, and literally uh, rascala when i disagreed and started telling her about hillary she gets angry she started yeah she started yes. you could see she was getting disgusted to a point again it's a programmed response yeah she was getting mad and you know yes. what when she started getting mad it was getting me mad yeah. I'm well, like, oh, hell no. Now you're playing into the system. I'm telling you. It's like, look, I, I'm sorry, but you're, there's a lot of little ones here. You're the head of the pack here, and if this yeah. is the way you're thinking, you're helping the fake news brainwash these kids the same way my parents unwillingly yes. helped, helped the yeah. fake news That's brainwash me. It's been going on for a very long time, and I believe, truly believe now more than ever it's coming to an end in a very short period because as we become exponentially greater and greater and greater when I start speaking about it with other people and they become interested and some of those people will go through this training and become leaders and get put out into their communities we have people from California from Arizona from Michigan from New York uh, from I think it was Connecticut um, and they all go back to their communities and they they <laughs> they they share with their communities that there is a way, there's a better way. Rascala, um, my, my daughter and my son-in-law themselves, they're awake. They know the real deal, right? And mm -hmm. when, when, when he said, when his brother said, Hillary will make a great president, he, I could see the worry on his face. Uh, mm -hmm. My son-in-law, he's like, uh-oh, no, no, he didn't. You know, because he knew that that was going to hit a spark with me. It's like... People are asleep. I mean, they are, and you don't have to look far. This is why we miss life on other planets sometimes. I mean, it's the same thing. I mean, these people, they just, they, they miss the boat over and over, and they have no idea they're missing it. They're just, I mean, they're just, they're like hanging onto the bumper, just skeeching a ride. I, they, they have no idea what's going on. Hillary will make a great president. Why? Hey, you know what, know what the reasoning is? Some of the reasons? Oh, she won't mess around. She'll take Iran out. She'll, I'm like, and I'm smacking my head and I'm thinking, we're done. We're, what hope? Hope? I hope these people don't ever get into office. I mean, there's the hope. Oh, my Lord. A twisted experience watching Jeb Bush on his uh, little presidential run last night. Uh, I know. It's like I, if you're collecting bobblehead. I'm going to barf. If you're collecting bobblehead bushes, I mean, you're you're in your glory here. Uh, one bush after the other. The only thing I could think was, uh, you know, he started speaking Spanish and on and on and on. And it's like, uh, okay, really? Are we going oh. that, that, that stream? Okay. Oh, yeah, that's Here. like Hillary coming to Alabama or someplace and talking about free our people. It's like, how dare you? 
<laughs> you have no idea what it's like to be a slave. Uh, don't I'm, try to play. And people fall for it. Unfortunately, oh, again, listen, it's, listen. Here's here's what we have. We have we have Clinton and Bush both vying for presidency. We have a new Terminator movie coming out. We have. Um, and all this different kind of reboot stuff. So, you know, what year is this? I feel like I'm living in the 90s again. <laughs> it's worse than that, man. I mean, we're back to stone tools. It, it really yeah. is. But that's that's what we have. I mean, this is all, all a rehash of what we went through, you know, 12 years ago. This is exactly a duplicate of it all. It's ridiculous. Why are people not seeing this? Because of the system. That's why I told you they're getting better at what they're doing. You and I are are outside of the matrix. You and I and Michael and the majority of the listening audience, if not all of them, we're outside of the matrix and we're looking in. We're looking at the system and we're looking at each other going, now, why in the hell can I see this and they can't? What is wrong? Yeah, and I that's know. The exposure, there's, there's a couple of reasons. One of them is the exposure to the media. This spe- specifically the exposure to the television set itself, the frequency that comes from the television set, is a hypnotizing type of frequency. It is a is a, a lower resonating frequency, so it brings you down well, so that you can literally be programmed. You're right, Rasko, but here's another problem, and I was talking about this at the beginning of the show. You've got medias out there, like if you were to type in, say, chemtrails, you're, you're going to have a few sites that are going to come up first chances are you're going to have some of those bigger shows should we say that mm-hmm. will come up first in those search engines they'll come up first with you know the guest for this or that so they i mean they take over they they get in there and then they give it a bad name so when somebody who doesn't know any better is looking into this stuff they run into them first they see the ridiculousness just as we would in what these mm-hmm. people try to promote makes a big joke of the whole topic before you know it they're like yeah i'll stick with fox news you know they're because i mean like like you get oh whistleblower says this whistleblower says that no proof never happens and then yeah how many times can you you know you cry wolf before the fox news watcher says all right i'm not falling for it again i think the most sickening thing when i saw the bush thing it was it was uh my mom happened to have it on fox news and they were doing the broadcast of his announcing his presidential run and after the speech was over I was I was literally sickened. I I almost went in and vomited. I heard them saying, "Well, the this this family, this Bush family has been a great thing for America. I think that we oh need to have another Bush into place because of all the great things that that the previous two oh did." My God. I'm, well, That's I'm telling funny. people right now and I'm sticking to my guns. I'm telling you right now, the next president selected for the united states is going to be hillary clinton i agree with you i think they do i think what they're going to do is the same thing that they did with obama nobody can say boo about anything that he does because the instant that you do you're being called a racist yeah. even if it's blatantly obvious that what he's done no is, they're it's the law and unconstitutional yeah they're, they're, the they're, same thing with her oh you're just you're you're a misogynist you don't like the fact that there's a woman as a president you're, they're going to save Jed. Jed Bush will be their trump card. They'll they'll pull that when they need him. First, it's going to be Hillary because they already oh, played man. the first black man. Now it's the first woman. Folks, all you got to do is look at the playbook. I looked. It's a woman next. It's going to be Hillary. That, why do you think they're not letting the media get at her? I mean, come on. Now, why do you think they're, they're you know, they're ta- every t- you can turn on any fake news station and you ain't going five minutes without some Hillary talk. So, Listen, I'll tell you. I'll tell you why you know that they are doing all of this, and why we actually don't have any laws here in the United States when it comes to this. I'll give you the perfect reason: U.S. Code eighteen, section two one two zero seven one B states, and I paraphrase here that any federal employee who knowingly or unknowingly, willfully or unwillfully destroys, mangles, or eliminates any federal documentation while it is in their control, is subject to fine, arrest, and is disqualified from being able to hold any public office. Mm. What, did he, what, did, what happened? The email. She destroyed the email servers. That's federal property. Those were federal documents. She's automatically disqualified. Private. I thought they were hers personally. Yeah, nope. <laughs> but, but here's the thing. She's part of the family. 
All that, all that bickering that you see on the news, that's, that's for us. That's just to, to keep us bickering back and forth whether she's a bad person or not. So, right in circuses. Yeah, that's all it is. And behind the scenes, they're saying, don't worry, Hillary, soon you'll be able to rule the world. You could pick right up where Obama left off, which he'll never leave off, just like George <clears throat> Bush never leaves off. These, these people are all, you know, they're... They're all in cahoots, all of them. I mean, Hillary Clinton's next because she's going to be the first woman president. Then after that, you could, if we last that long, okay, after that, you'll have the first gay president or the first Hispanic president. And they'll keep playing the idiots, the sheeple who fall for this stuff. And they'll play you as long as you let them. Next thing you know, they'll have the first Batman president, you know. That, and that's, it, why, that's why it's important that we raise the consciousness level of the people. Instead of revolting and using violence, that's why it's important that we raise the consciousness level. Because once we do that, Michael, that's what's happened to you. It's what's happened to Ira. It's what's happened to me. Our consciousness level has risen above the system, and we recognize what's going on around us. Even even though they try to make it look good, and they de- they deceive the majority, 90% of the people believe what they're hearing. How is it that we are this way? We have our consciousness level has been has rose to a point where we're above it now. We can look down and we can see it and we can witness it, but we're above it, and that's what we need to do. We need to get other people to be above it. Once they're above it, they bring other people that are above it, and then it doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. We reach a point where no matter what they throw at us, nothing's going to work because we're going to see right through it just like we see through it right now. And, and Pat in our chat makes a real good point. Transgender president. Yeah. Survey uh, says, ding! Uh, They'll do well, it. You know, they're, they're pushing forward, uh, uh, what is it, Bruce Jenner, Caitlyn Jenner, whatever the hell his name is at this point. I wouldn't be surprised if later down the line he announces his They book. are pushing morals to completely out of this country. They've already... De- oh, here we go. You got me going. They've already killed killed the family they've destroyed the family they've got the they've told the women that hey if you have a baby with this guy and you kick his bum ass out of your house well you could collect child support and done so they've done they've worked it in a way where you know greed has taken over in this country let's face it it has we're, and, we're and there's, the money. there's the money. yeah there's too many for for a lot and no offense women i'm not saying everybody i'm saying in, in my experience what i've seen is that you know they're going to do better off if they get the man you know the I, yeah i don't i don't need no man in my life my baby don't need no man you know nobody needs yeah, no man that's back, that's back to the yeah. system yeah We're just, to, just like thank you saying. satan people thank wake up they'll understand satan. that this is all by design that all of even the way that they act is all by design it's pre-designed it's all put into this system it's when they were born into this system, they didn't even realize that they were part of this, all of this that was going on. No. And when, when you raise the consciousness level of 2%, there will be a shift in the way people think, and they'll be able to see through all of this lies. And I think all we're all garbage. starting to see that. I, I really do. I think that we're already starting to see that. You see more and more people are actually starting to ask questions and realizing that there is something not right with things. Mm-hmm. They're not yeah. quite there yet, but they're at least yeah. on their way. So we can see that that the the level of consciousness is changing. Yeah. The problem is that we're not shown that really because of the way that the mainstream media works. One thing that I want to make sure that people understand is that what we see on the mainstream media is not what we're seeing on the streets. This is just their what they want us to perceive as That's happening. Correct. Oh yeah, you listen, if you know how to read this stuff and and after after the years I've put into this, I know how to read this stuff. And you just when I watch the fake news and I do sometimes, I have to turn it on at least a few minutes every day and see what the hell they're spewing, right? So, I'll watch it and I watch what they're saying. I listen to every word and I read between the lines and and you can usually figure out what's coming next. They'll tell you what's coming next i mean they don't mean to tell you but they'll tell you what's coming next and and you could tell you know where the cover-ups are and what you know what what are they pushing most like when they put a spotlight on something there's a reason for it there's an agenda behind it like hillary the spotlight is on hillary right now she is the next president who will be selected and i thought that's why like we're gonna have a show next week i think andrew bishago will be on with me and you know there's some good people who want to run for president and i'm thinking 
You, these are the same people, though, who have preached to me for years, telling me that presidents aren't elected, they're selected, and now they're running. And I'm thinking, well, if that's the case, <laughs> where, where are you going? <laughs> if yep. you get in, should I assume you've been selected? And that's where I'm at with that. So I'm going to have fun talking to someone. That's why Jesse Ventura won't come back on because, you know, he he don't want to answer the questions. When you look at the way that they portray the different figures as well in the media, it's it's important to understand the the way that they mind control people into, um, you know, perceiving people into a different way. For example, you look at a lot of the pictures that they put out of Hillary Clinton right now, and you see that in a lot of them she has this halo effect around her. <laughs> she has, uh, you know, like you look at her, and and it's always kind of like a exactly. bottom up view, you it's know. Comical. So you're seeing. So you're seeing uh, her with this halo behind her, and you're looking up at her from the perspective of the picture. Well, that's putting her into this quote-unquote alpha or god kind of perspective. <laughs> so people instantly start thinking of her in those terms. It, those who are swayed to it are easily swayed. You know, it's it's easy to do to the masses of people. Yeah, it is. unfortunately, right now it is. That, again, that's why I go back to it's raising. Imagine if right now the odds are, you know, realistically are probably ninety percent of the people are are of that way. They believe that um, whatever they hear and see on the mainstream media is, you know, that's the that's the truth. It's written in stone. Yeah, um, that's right. I mean, I went like I say, my visit to Rochester. I mean, I went to my dad's too, and that's what he had the TV on, Fox News, and and I sat down and I said, you know, Dad, you're watching the fake news. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> the news is on. It's like no, the fake news is on, yeah. and it's like oh, he's 84, and you know his health is starting to 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 get a little frail on him, and and so I'm not going to push it. He's gotten this far. You know, yeah. let, let well, he's he's from the uh, the type of generation that they relied on the media. The media yeah. was basically everything. They became kings very quickly, and now you know they they still fall under that aspect. And and he served his country, and, right? Uh, you know, and uh, you know, if only he knew the truth. You know, that upsets a guy when you find out you yeah, put your yeah, life on the line. Well, yeah. yeah, exactly. I mean, you look at you look at a lot of the vets who went through the Vietnam War, and they come back here and they find out that it was all based on a lie, yeah. and that does something to a person. I mean, I yeah. I let me do tell you, myself, does something to a person. I damn yeah. near had a I damn near had a nervous breakdown over yeah. that crap. There you go. Uh, exactly. It messes with you big time when you find out that there was nothing but nothing more than money. People's lives. People were were murdered. People were, we lost 60,000. And that's what they tell us. Who knows? They, we know that they lie to us, but they tell us it's 60,000 well, of our generation. Who knows how many hundreds or even hey, millions hey, of Vietnamese? Yeah, hey, I was going to say, look at all, there was a lot of Vietnamese that died as well. So Just on the other side, right? Yeah. Exactly. Uh, and it was all for a lie. And it's, it's yeah. devastating. It really yeah. is. Yep. It's a it's a sad situation, and this and this is the situation that we have. Everything that that we hear, understand, and and believe is all based on these lies, on deceit, that on this told, system. And That's right. We're, we're not even told what it means to be human. They, they do everything that they can do to dehumanize. Well, right. Here's the beauty of it all: is we don't need them to tell us. At least we, I know, I'm awake enough where we don't need them to tell us. We, we, you know, I know what it's what, what it's about to be human, and and I don't say I know it as far as I'll argue with people that I'm right and they're wrong. I know it in my heart what it's to be human. This hum, human experience that I'm having right now is because this is what my spirit wants. It's a, it's a, it's it's. I'm a spiritual being, and I'm having that human experience. And and the only way to do it is to get into this meat suit. So you know, <laughs> so so I understand what it's like to be human, and 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 I'm okay with it. I'm having a lot of fun spreading the truth and 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 you know when it's all over with i'm not afraid because i know where i'm going i i don't know exactly where i don't know you know what color the walls are there or any of that <laughs> but uh, but i know it exists this place so exactly <laughs> and and that and that's a good thing i mean you you and i both come at things from that perspective i like how you use my term meat suit there <laughs> i love it um, yeah i use uh, it all the time now 
we come from that perspective of of understanding that this is not our first dance around the maple. You know, yeah. we we've come to that understanding of things, that knowledge of things, and that really does make a difference. I mean, you know, for the average person, I don't think really most people out there think beyond let's go to the next trip to Walmart or something like that, you know, and, and they get on Facebook and they laugh at the pictures of people walking through Walmart with their strange and, and varied dress and such, you know, and that, that to them is life. And if that's how they want to live, then that's how they're going to live. It's not a big deal. But for those of us who, who think outside of that box or think outside of that um, physicality, I guess you could say, it, we really would love for them to know what the truth is because the the truth is so much greater. It will than, set you free. The truth will does. set you free. It really does. You know, yeah. for the example of, of money, for instance, one, one misconception mis- uh, is the fact that they always say that, that money is the root of all evil. Well, that's not what the Bible says. That's not what the scripture says. It says that the love right. of money that's is right. Well, you yeah. know what? Yeah, I was going to say, too, money is not. People who say that money is the root of all evil, horse crap, you, you're the root of that evil. If, if money is what motivates you to be evil, then it's on you. That's Precisely. Just, yeah, maybe you like Corvettes, so you'll kill someone for one of those. Or maybe you like insurance policies, so you kill over those, or whatever it might be. So, you know, money's not the root of evil. Money actually keeps a roof over my head. So, <laughs> you know, money's all right. It's the people behind it that suck. Right. I mean, the idea with money is basically just that it's the, the physical manifestation of our expenditure of energy. We put in work and this manifestation of the energy is, is the money as opposed to us, you know, getting something out of the ground and eating it like we would, you know, before or hunt and gather, <laughs> however you want to put it. You know, we, we, we do the work at a job to make the money so that then we can have that expenditure of energy. It's just a storage system, basically. But people fall into this aspect. Of, of the physicality with it all and say, well, this is actually what is everything. And that is so not the case. It is, it is, just, it is just the manifestation of something that you already have done. So why are you so enamored with that? You know, it just doesn't, I don't get it, I guess. I, I, I'm not, I'm so far removed from money that it's ridiculous. Well, here's <laughs> the thing. Once, you, once you've taken that red pill and you've woke up, uh, it's honestly, it, for me, I mean, it's like going back and trying to think. I mean, you, I mean you've all, we've all done this, be a kid in the car, and it's like your sister or brother say, try to imagine nothing. And it's like really hard to do if you could do it. I, I couldn't, right? But it's no different. It's like try to go back to when you didn't know all this stuff, when when you were just carefree sheeple. I can't do it. I can't imagine. I can't remember what it was like to be like that. And it, it's scary to think that people are in that state where they just don't know what's going on. And when they hear stuff like this, they think, ah, ha, 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 make the popcorn. This is interesting. What a bunch right. of horse crap, right? Yeah. Not only do they not know, they don't know that they do not know. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Exactly. They they have this idea that what they see in front of them is the end all and be all, but they don't realize that their brain has has completely, you know, taken over everything and they have no connection to spirit whatsoever. And that's sad, you know, but uh, that is what they're here for. That's the lesson that they're here to learn. That's the way that I look at it anyways, you know. Everybody has to go through these different lessons. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I submit to you that that may be true, but it's also the system that is in place, that has been in place for a long time. It is most definitely. I'm not discounting that. What I mean is that, that uh, the system is, is there basically to kind of congeal these lessons together. I think that we're getting to a point, though, where we're, we're, we're going to be away from that. Um, there's going to be a period of, of really hard things coming as that system gets removed, but I do see that system being removed and a new one being put into place. Hey, they say now that uh, the United States and China are planning uh, military exercises together. So, folks, this is why I say, uh, you know, talk about preparing. This is why I say that they're all in it together because one minute it's like, get out of my space or I'm going to drop a bomb on you, blah, blah, blah. And the next minute they're training, they're, they're in it together. It's we're the enemy, folks. Don't be fooled. All you citizens everywhere <laughs> around the world, we are the enemy. 
not a conspiracy right. theorist. I am. I know. I'm one of those rotten <laughs> bastards who sit around, smoke pot, and watch sci-fi all night. You know. Yep. 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 Bad me. It, it's it's you know. It, but I challenge people all the time. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. Then if I if I'm wrong, if it's just conspiracy conspiracy theory, prove me wrong. I I think that. Not so much that they're all in it together as much as it's a game to them. I mean, well, yeah, they're in, they're in such a position of power that literally it's a game to them, and um, it's whoever can outsmart the other, um, and kind, sort of, kind of like a um, a poker game. I, I'm trying. I can't think of the right word. Well, I can, I can, like chess or axis versus allies. And oh, kind of I'll, I'll tell you exactly what it's like. It's like two. Here we go. Let's go NFL, will we? Okay, it's like two owners. They're sitting up in their booth and they're both laughing and wreaking the reward of the game. And uh, and the rest of us, and that includes the, these these people who think they're in charge, presidents, what have you. Uh, them as well. They're they're all pawns. They're all you know. So. If China and the U.S. did go to war, you know, sure, the presidents would be at each other and all that stuff, and that's all for our entertainment. But behind closed doors, I think you've got, you know, the elite, those people who run the world, I think, sitting back there and just laughing because... Yes, exactly. Yeah. So Making money. Yeah. yeah. You're yep. exactly right. They they have so much wealth that they don't um, they don't have any connection to anybody that doesn't have that same amount of wealth. They they're just so far removed from the the normal human way of thinking. They they have literally no connection to what it's like to be you know a person like us out here you know in the great unwashed masses. No concept of it whatsoever. They're as far removed from being human as you can get without maybe changing species. And there may actually be something to the idea of them being an entirely different species as well. So Yeah, that's very true. They are. That's I, I you know, it's it's tough. You hate to go off on that limb sometimes because people carry it too far, I think. But I look at the big picture sometimes and I think whoever is behind that curtain Damn, they 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 can't be human. I mean, to be poisoning well, everything. He's not. He's not. Wait a minute. The Bible says that Lucifer is the god of the fallen world. We are the fallen world. Look around us and tell me that it's not a fallen world around us. So therefore, Lucifer, who is not of this world, as an alien, is not of our species. He's he's an alien. That's who's behind ultimately in much of what's going on today are Luciferians, people who are following Lucifer, who is the god of the fallen world. Hmm. All right. Well, we do have to take a break because we missed one. Uh, so let's do that. We'll come back and talk more about uh, this and uh, the ET. I, 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 you know, I, it's hard to argue about any of it. It's, it's just I, I couldn't imagine like you, me, and Ira getting together and, and sitting here and going, you know what? Hey, I know a way we could get rich. Let's go spray poisonous chemicals in the sky yeah and, yeah and then and then ira looks to me and says yeah all right great and and you look at me and say well aren't we gonna breathe it? it's like yeah but we're gonna be rich so what we'll build yeah. underground bunkers and we can, we can have technology that'll chelate that stuff out of our system so why worry about it well yeah there yeah. you go and then i say well okay all right great or you you know it's got to be off world i mean how sick do you have to be to crap in your own drinking water i don't know so oh sure. well, let's let's take a break folks we'll be back this is late night in the midlands daniel sheehan did not make it on tonight i have roscala from the red pill reality show and ira from open eyes we'll be back in just a moment you're welcome to call in at 803-317-2264 and guys i'm going to put you on hold and We'll bring you back right after this break. So, folks, we'll be back.
You have found the best place on the Internet by tuning into K98Talk.com, where it is our mission to broadcast the very best variety programming, giving you a balance of information from every angle and letting you decide. We are here to serve our listening audience with a proven track record. So stay with K98Talk.com and the Spark Radio Network, and we will keep you informed. Hello, this is Lisa Marie here to tell you about Oxy Silver, legally available only through CureShop.com and HealthyWorldStore.com. Read Dr. Horowitz's book, Healing Celebrations, to learn how miracle healings can be made to happen through faith, prayer, and a pure diet. Get great immunity using vitamin C, D, and Oxy Silver, Liquid Dentist, GI Flora Pro, a top shelf probiotic. Use five to eight superfood as a great tasting meal substitute for energizing organic nutrients and losing weight and zeal love and natural clays for detoxifying your body oxy silver oxygenates and resonates with 528 for faster healing so help save lives putting drug lords and criminals out of business and keep the lnm network broadcasting register for our free cooperative at healthyworldaffiliates.com Slash four nine four eight and buy Oxy Silver and other great products in package specials at great discounts from the CureShop.com. Buy Oxy Silver, GI Flora Pro, five two eight Superfood, Zeo Love, and Love Minerals at great discounts at CureShop.com. That's CureShop.com with two P's. Cure Shop or call toll free at one eight 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 six two one seven six. That's 1-888-621-7611. Do it now. It's the middle of the night and there's nothing much to do. Bring your insomniac self over to Late Night and Midland to learn something. Learn something. We've got every topic you can think of and very little being off limits. Alien abductions, government corruptions, the stuff that's got your sleep disrupted. Disrupted. Come join the conversation tells and tune in to Late Night in the Midlands with your host, Michael Vera. Michael Vera. The LNM Radio Network offers a moderated chat room at www.latenightinthemidlands.com. Just click the chat and listen page from the drop down menu at the top of any page on the website or click the listen live button at the top of the home page at www.latenightinthemidlands.com. The story I'm about to tell happened to me when I was about nine years old, when I was living in a small community um, near Shaplow, which is north of Sudbury. Um, I was about nine years old, and we were driving down what's now known as Highway 667, then known as the Sultan Highway. I was with my mother and another friend of mine. It was in the summertime when I remember it best, it was in summertime, and the sun had set. I don't know how late it was. And we were driving along, going home. And I remember looking, my mother looking in the rearview mirror and seeing a light, which we thought on the highway was a motorcycle. And it followed us for a long time. We didn't have much concern. And in a matter of what seemed seconds, the light was in the back of the pickup truck which would be in the box and at that time my mother sped up and my friend was scared but I remember looking back from the cab into the box and I remember seeing a light and I don't think the diameter was any more than a foot or a foot and a half I just remember it glowing very brightly and my mother speeding up and driving faster and telling me to duck down, but I was very curious and we were taking some pictures with a 110 camera. And a little later, I don't know how long we were driving along the road, but then again, in a matter of seconds, the light shot straight up from the back of the truck into the sky and that was the last we saw of it. So the whole incident lasted maybe, maybe two minutes, three minutes, but it seemed like an eternity from the time it was in there. 
You're listening to the LNM Radio Network. Talk radio like no other. Bringing the truth back to talk radio. Sorry, it took me a few extra minutes to uh, get back here, but we've got a one of those. I've told you about palmetto bugs and how they're like roaches on steroids. Well, we had one of those flying around in here, and uh, he actually landed on me, and I didn't like it not one bit. So he's now hiding behind the television over here somewhere, and uh, the search is on. Uh, they're they're nasty little things. They're not like roach roaches. They don't come and infest your home, your home or well, but they're like these these big. I don't know what the hell. They they might as well be birds. They're big enough. It's they're disgusting, and, and they always come at the most opportune times. But uh, all right, well let's get back to it. The website's triple w dot late night in the midlands dot com. Become a member. Be informed, and by all means inform others. Let's get back to it here. Our guys were back, and I'm being attacked by the Palmetto State's Palmetto Bug. <laughs> so, we have those. You do? They are nasty. They are nasty. They're ugly, nasty, rotten. <laughs> like It's like they came out of a hellhole somewhere. They're the ugliest. 
And I hope and he, he hears any me. kind of any kind of critter. I don't mind. I, I have love for all the critters that are out there. I you know we get spiders in the house or something like well, that. I'll tell him. I'll tell him. Hey, you guys can stay as long as you want. Just don't come down in my face. Don't crawl on me because then you'll die. You're trespassing on my own personal space. But you know, otherwise, you guys can live yeah. here with no problem. However, roaches or palmetto bugs, those things are evil. They need to die, and I and they they have no reason for being. So I, I was gonna say, Ira, you you did say that you can't see very good. So if you could see these things you might not like them as much because they have some <laughs> ugly ugly ass disgusting things oh uh, no those those two things right there roaches and palmettos <laughs> <laughs> well here's the thing see i learned the hard way with the palmetto bug i thought it was just a giant roach right and i'm thinking well i'll crush it well yeah. they see you coming and they fly at you and they're, yep. they're not afraid of you. I've had one sit on his hind legs and box me to to not go into the vacuum cleaner. I mean, it's it's. I don't like them. I don't like them at all. And everything when you get in the south, every bug, whatever you have in the north, picture that bug. I don't know, fifty times bigger. And that's what we have here in the South. I mean, I don't even know what some of this stuff's called. And, and then they got colors. I mean, it's like, you, you know, it's like they're just the color of them tell you don't mess with me. Have you got bumblebees? Oh, we, we got the, yeah, we got bumblebees, but we got these bees too that, that drill holes in every damn thing. Oh, right? yeah, boar. Yeah. Oh, the boars. I can't stand them damn things. They, holes everywhere. It looks like somebody, it looks like the house got shot up. I um, I'd never been around bumblebees. I was up in Connecticut, and um, while I was up there, the house that I was at, they had uh, bumblebees all around. These big, huge bees, and um, they would they would buzz you. I mean, they would come right like a fly. You know how a how fly flies around you? You're like, get the hell away from me! Yeah, and uh, they would buzz me, and I would do that, and and. Um, the the person that I was there visiting would say, "Don't do that, dude! You piss them off; they'll come sting you." And I'm, oh my god, it's a freaking bee! Yeah, it was, they're unbelievable. Yeah, well, we know it's bad here right now. The mosquitoes are, are a killer. You can't go outside even during the day. I'm used to if you go out in the sunlight, the mosquitoes would leave you alone. Yeah, in, yeah. in New York, not yeah. here. You're in the sunlight; yeah. they don't care. They just still get you, and they're bad because we've gotten a lot of rain here. So Are you sure it's not the genetically modified ones well, or those? Uh, yeah, no, we got that luxury. No, no. Thank you. Oh, we we they're here too by now. I guarantee it. And yeah, I really good good bringing that up because that's exactly what I said. I I told Autumn I'm going inside. I'm I'm not going to let these genetically modified mosquitoes you know inject me with anything. Uh, they're Ooh. horrible. It's like one after the other. They just keep coming. Even the tennis racket Adana got me. No good. Yeah, I mean, there's just too many of them. I mean, they were taking it out of my hand and hitting me with it. <laughs> <laughs> so Knocking down your door, we're going to get you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and now uh, it's the palmetto bug. And it's, I'll tell you, it's just this, this hot, muggy weather brings out the worst uh, that Mother Earth has to offer. See, we've had that up here. We've, we've had 10 days now of rain, and we've had, like, all kinds of flooding and stuff going on up here. It's just been horrible. The bugs up here have just been then, going crazy. Uh, yeah, and then I've got a bunch of frogs who decide every night to hang out over on my deck, and I'm thinking, look, you guys got to go because you're going to draw the snakes. The snakes are going to want to eat you, and I don't want the snakes over here. So, guys, it's not a, a, a race thing, but you got to go. <laughs> you froggist <laughs> yeah i know i'm horrible but hey i owned frogger you know when i was a kid. i had that game so no real good at squishing them with the cars yeah oh yeah yeah real <laughs> good real good at all but um yeah i'm still looking for my bug i don't see him and that makes me nervous not being able to see him because that means he's creeping He's big. He's going to come carry you off in the middle of the night no, while you're asleep, he, carry you back to his lair. He can set off a, a mouse trap. I mean, he's that big. And so, you know. Uh. <laughs> and, and, you know, you know these things can't hurt you, right? But they're disgusting. I mean, just the, 
the noise they make and the things they do, they know they're creeping you out. I grew to, I grew to hate roaches and grew to my, my creep factor of roaches grew when I was living in a house that used to have roaches. They, they got rid of them. <laughs> so I guess there was some eggs that went dormant, but I had lived with people that were really nasty. And one night I went to wash the dishes and I found two of them crawling up my leg and all oh, hell no. <laughs> All hell broke loose, man. <laughs> yeah, see, I don't play that. I Like, whenever I've signed a lease somewhere, I've told the landlord, you sure? There's no bug problem. Because I'm telling you right now, you could wipe your behind with this lease. I don't care what I signed. <laughs> if there is a bug problem once I move in, I'll leave. You could sue me all you want. <laughs> yes, sir. You're not going to get nothing, but, you know, I'm serious. I let them know. I, I, I'll tell you what, I'll pack up just as quick as I unpack. I don't live with that stuff. It's nasty. So, anyways, guys, uh, well, we've got about another, I don't know, 40 minutes left, I guess. Uh, maybe less. Who knows? We might end it uh, a few minutes early tonight. Um, a lot going on. And, and you know, everybody seems to think that something's coming in September. And uh, NASA had actually just debunked that, that notion. Of course, we could believe NASA, right? But... I, I personally, I don't buy it. I think, I think whatever's coming, you know, people are acting like it's going to be coming from space, and I think it's, I think it's worse than that. I mean, I think a planet from space would be a blessing. I think what's coming is much worse. What, what do you think is coming? I think that I think that World War Three is going to spread. I think that we'll finally get a taste of it, just as other countries have, and, and I think that it's going to get really ugly, really fast. That's what I think. But I don't think in September. I think it's going to come. It's going to start with the financial uh, system. Because I think that that China, they're going for a world currency. And, and, you know, I'm telling you, things are going to happen. They're going to happen overnight. You're going to go to bed one night, and you're going to have money. You're going to wake up the next morning, and you're not. Yeah, yeah, that's already happening. And people are going to be out in the streets. I see a big prevalence with with people focusing on September. Um, I think it's being done for a reason. I think that what they're doing, the the powers that be, lords of chaos, dark masters, whatever you want to call them, I think that they're putting this kind of idea forward in order to gather together energy, you know, to to gather energy together to create something. What that something may be, I don't know, but I can I can say with a a pretty high certainty that nothing is going to happen in September that is not already, you know, happening here and now. There's not going to be anything like um, untoward happening at that point. But I think that it's, it's kind of being used as a focal point for later, if that makes sense. I agree. I agree with that. I, I, I think you're, I think you're right on. But uh, yeah, I, I I say the same thing, and but I think when October comes, I think that reality is going to strike all these people who've been in denial. I just think that something's going to come that's going to, you know, wake a whole bunch of people up, and I think it's going. You know, we we've had it easy here, really. You think about it. I mean, you know, our this terrorist government of ours has been out, you know, ca- waging war on everybody, right? And and we've sat here and we've only seen what the fake news wants us to see, and well, some of us anyway. So I mean, the others of us, we know where to go to find the truth. But uh, and and it's just a matter of time before it comes here. And it's, yeah, it's, our, our, it's already here. That's that's our what pigeons about will be to coming home to roost. They most definitely will. Yeah, they're the borders sure, are open. Here. The borders are open. Grandma's getting felt up in the airport for security reasons, but you know, at the same time, the borders are open. Uh, they're 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 allowing sex offenders to go free. They've been free in sex offenders. Instead, they've been marking them down as deported, but they're not being deported. They're being let go in your communities so that they could rape your children, your wives. Your sons, your daughters, you know, that that's it. And this is a fact. See, they're setting us up to fail. That's what they're doing right now. They've, they've gone after the family. They're going after the Internet. They pretty much got that. They're, they're getting it. I mean, uh, it's just a matter of time before more of their rules for the FCC go in effect. Uh, then they'll get your guns, and, and it's on. That's it. You know, most of you, they'll they'll open the door to the FEMA camp. They'll say, hey, we've got Xbox One in there. And uh, there's a television with 350 channels. Uh, you'll be happy to know that President Clinton's on all of them. 
Um, and, and, you know, you'll walk right in. You'll be thankful for your, your microwave dinners and, you know, uh, your, your diet sodas and, and it'll all be good for most of you. Now, the rest of us, we're going to probably be killed in the streets because yeah. you all turned your backs on us. But, I know an yeah. unfortunately large amount of people personally who are going to be falling into that first category. No, oh, yeah, they'll walk. Oh, I talked to some in Rochester. They said Hillary will make great press. They're going to go, they're gonna go are you kidding me, man? You're going to give three meals a day and rent and give Xbox and, oh, man, I'm going. Yeah, I know, I know you are. I knew you would. I packed you a bag. Yep. You know, yep. Well, it's a sad state of affairs. It really is. Yeah. Oh, it is. And, and they, you know, then they'll tell them, hey, we. You join the military, you got no choice. You know, every every kid once he turns fifteen will go and 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 go kill those who resist us and and it'll be mandatory and you know, and they'll just keep adding more and more rules and before you know it they'll have robo people and they won't need you at all anymore. So I know it's sad, isn't it? But here's the good news. Uh, when we do leave this body, we're free. So, you know, keep that in mind. Exactly. Well, and I, there are I, a lot I, of things that are lies surrounding that, but yeah, we are most definitely. I have better news. We don't have to wait till we die. We can live now and enjoy our lives You're and right. enjoy everything that we have around us. All we have to do, it takes a very small amount of effort for people to start uniting together and standing for what is right. And we have to put up with this crap anymore. I'm telling you. Absolutely. We don't. I don't. I don't put up with it. I, I try to enjoy each day as best I can. And, you know, this, doing this show is a lot of work, but I enjoy it. I mean, you know, if I didn't, I wouldn't do it. You know, I I enjoy it because it's just, it's a mission. That's all it is. It's it's a mission, though. Uh, but, I, but I have fun doing it, you know. Don't get me wrong. But but it is a lot of work, as I'm sure you know, Ira, and, and Rascala, I'm sure you know. I mean, just getting ready for one night is, is a lot of work. I mean, Dude, you know, I have a whole new respect for you after doing your show last week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not easy. I know there's people who think that, hell, I could just go there and talk about what you know. Well, you know what? You keep doing that, eventually you become like repeat. And you keep saying the same thing over and over and over again, and people get sick of hearing it. So, yeah, you know, it's more than just sitting down and pulling a mic in front of your face. That's for I, sure. I've had to cover for Michael on a couple of occasions, yes. I don't know how he does it, it through the week. It, it, it would, I would be zonkers. And, and I'd, having, I'd a, my mind. having a guest is a lot of work because that involves even more. <laughs> it really does. I mean, and then if they don't show up, you know, you've prepared for maybe for nothing, and that that's kind of uh, sucky. But uh, but then again, like I say, what works is because I have guests who I'm actually interested in, so I have lots of questions. I don't have to, you know, have the producers, you know, put all that together for me. Thank God. You know, wouldn't want to be like that. But uh, but there are shows out there that do, anyways. But hey, you know, you, you, we've scholar hell. You've been how many years now? Have you been <laughs> three, three years Four. doing the show, right? Yeah, and and you've been you've been a listener uh, far longer than that. And you used yep. to call in a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, look, I mean, that's what we do. We grab real people. Ira, you too. I mean, you know, and, and Ryan, he's real people. So you know, that's what we like to do. And I, I like to test for everybody, but I guess I can't for everyone. I. <laughs> I, I, well, I don't know everybody personally, so but I know you guys, so you know I know you're real. Anyways, a, a, anything you guys want to get out there before we finish tonight? Well, I would like to um, just let people know that <clears throat> I've personally witnessed um, several things I want to share with people. I've witnessed a technology that can reverse the pollution and the damage that this small group of people has done to this planet. And I've also witnessed the ability of people who are absolute strangers to come together and build lifelong relationships that would otherwise out in the street uh, probably be at each other's throat. So if we're able to combine the ability to do these things, our future as a human race will be much, much brighter than what we have 
being shoved down our throats, so to speak, by this small group of people. So we have we have a right to choose. We are worthy of that choice, and all we need to do is come to the understanding that it is the people who have the power. It is not the government has the power on the surface, but that which controls the gun, that which not controls the government, that which powers the government comes from the people. And when we decide to take it back, then we won't need these crazy people anymore. We'll put an end to all this craziness. That's right. That's right. Ira? Well, I'm in total agreement. I, I want to make sure to say what I try to say on a lot of my shows. Don't have fear. You know, that's that's the biggest Amen. thing. Have no fear. Don't be afraid of what's coming. Don't be afraid of what's going on around us. It's just an emotion that is there to be used as a tool but not to control you. And unfortunately, so many people these days fall under the aspect of being controlled by their fear. You don't have to live in the negativity. You can you can do what I know that, that I, for instance, do, and I'm pretty sure that, Michael, you do this as well. And, Rascala, I know you do this. Even if you look at the things that are negative that are going on in the world today, which there are a lot of, you know, don't get me wrong, there are a lot of negative things that are going on out there. Even if you have to look at it and pay attention to it, you don't have to live in the negativity. You don't have to live there. You can you can walk away from it and go right back to your balanced life. Go right back to the, the love that you share between you and your spouse, between you and your kids, between you and your friends, whatever the case may be. There is love in your life. There is the, that positive aspect that's there that you can go to as a respite and take uh, take a break basically from that negativity. Don't live in the negative. Don't live in fear. Make sure that you do what you know you're supposed to do, which is to love each other, hold each other tight, and make sure that everybody is doing okay. And if we can all do that, we will all be uplifted. The more of us that do that, the better the world gets. Yeah, that's yeah, right. It starts with you. I know it sounds corny, folks, but it does. It starts with each one of us. So, you know, I do my part. you got to do yours. And that's together right. we right. become the collective. Uh, it's just the way it is. But, guys, I, we're going to finish a few minutes early tonight. Um, it, it's been a rough one, actually, you know, uh, with the <laughs> guests. I've uh, uh, gone through quite a bit to uh, get them on and – and and it didn't happen, so we'll reschedule them. I mean, it, it, these things happen. Now, if it happens twice, then I get mad. So uh, hopefully, it won't happen again. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, we'll get them rescheduled tomorrow night. I got Doctor Leonard Horowitz and Sherry Kane joining me on Thursday. I have who do I have Thursday? I have Kathleen Martin. Joining me on Thursday, we're going to talk about abductions. And then I've got uh, Byron uh, Belitos, I think it is, or Beltos? Beltos. And uh, he'll be joining me on Friday. And, uh, oh, and I got Jim Garrow coming up on Monday the 22nd. We got a lot of good stuff. I know on the 24th, Laura Eisenhower, uh Andrew Bishago and Ben Davis will be joining us, so we'll have a pretty big show that night. So we got a lot of good stuff coming up uh, here on Late Night in the Midlands. It's been good. Uh, Rascala uh, Ira here has done a fantastic job for us, absolutely, with the L and M Network. He is he's like a he's like a blessing, and you know, he don't go unnoticed. His wife as well. So thank you, Ira. Oh, you're welcome. We're we're just grateful for the uh, the chance to be able to do it. We we've wanted to see this network grow, and uh, you know, just do what we can to to help out. That's what we're all about. So I'm just grateful for the opportunity to be able to do it. Um, if you guys want tomorrow uh, for my shows, Open Eyes, I have uh, Maggie Hart coming on. She was on last week. She came on as a, as an emergency guest when one of the guests ended up canceling on us last week. And uh, we were having a conversation about the paranormal, and we're going to kind of continue the discussion tomorrow. As I was actually recording the show when uh, <laughs> you contacted me to come on tonight. So, yeah. um, And then uh, Thursday, Joe and I will be live on Brothers at Arms. And on Friday, I'm going to be talking about uh, – things that people missed while they were distracted by the black person that wasn't black so <laughs> oh well that sounds interesting and confusing 
<laughs> well, the, the big news that was in the mainstream media was that a uh, lady who claims that she's black works for the uh, NAACP and uh, basically it caused a whole huge rigmarole, but the mainstream media got attached to it and totally overlooked um, a bunch of different stories that need to be talked about so well folks i i when we gather up all the criminals let's let's not forget the mainstream media we've got to go there too because don't you get so sick and tired of it it's don't you just want to smack the hell out of somebody i do indeed oh lord have mercy i think (laughs) i hope he has mercy (laughs) michael um before i forget i wanted to tell you earlier you're gonna have dr horwitz on tomorrow night i am ask him about the experiment that he did where he had, I think it was eight or nine or ten people in a circle, and uh, one of them was holding a glass of water. And you'll understand the power that I keep telling people the power that we have. He, uh, I think it was him. I'm almost certain it was him. There were eight or nine or ten people in a circle, um, all of them holding hands except for two. One was holding a glass. The other one was just holding their hand to their side. They began to pray. And then the person who had their hand to their side stuck their finger in that glass of water and about came out of their socks. No kidding. Yeah. I'll have to ask him about that. Remind me on Skype uh, tomorrow. Like, send me a little I'll message. Do, I'll do that. And, and then I'll write it down or I'll copy and paste it and stick it in my notes. And okay. So I can ask him. That's, that's interesting. All right. Well, hey, it's been real, guys, and I thank you both for for stepping in with me tonight um, and such short notice. It's uh, the guest uh, disappeared on me, so uh, we'll try to get him rescheduled, and we should have a good show tomorrow night. And uh, that's about it for me. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Michael. I appreciate it. All right. Have a great night. You too. All right. Bye-bye. All right, everybody. Uh, That's going to do it for us tonight. This has been a broadcast of Late Night in the Midlands on the LNM Radio Network. Keep your eyes posted to the sky because you never know what you might see. Keep your ears posted to this broadcast because you never know what you might learn. And for our station manager and program director, Ira Robinson, our webmaster, Jolene Robinson, our chat moderators, and all of you, wherever you may be around this great, great marble of ours. It's great. It's it's us that aren't. Uh, so, so it is great. Folks, have a great night, and I'll be back with you tomorrow night. Good night, everybody.